Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Episode 8, The Well Thoughts. So, another episode I love. Spoilers for the MCU leading up to and including this episode. No spoilers for anything after this episode. And, yeah, before I dive in, the top link in the description box. Yes, will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in. So, yeah, at the start of the episode, we see that Gemma is not talking to her mother, which, of course, tells us that by the end of the episode, 100%. She's going to, to, you know, they're going to call, she's going to answer, and, but, honestly, I, I didn't mind so much this, this super obvious arc. And this episode did air after, the, I, I guess this was the first episode to air after, um... Oh, actually, no, it, this was the, the second episode to air after Thor The Dark World. So, yeah, they're they're cleaning up after the, the climax of that. And, yeah, the, the tourists chainsaw the tree for the, for the staff and get super strength. I really appreciate the show actually, you know, yeah, the 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 names, the pronunciations of the names and the the text on the sign and a little bit of accents also very very authentic <clears throat> for Norwegian, yeah. And I appreciate Ward talking Gemma into you know, being being calm enough that she can go, you know, yeah, walk onto the the tree. He's really shown a lot of sensitivity these last couple of episodes, which is of course why they have to really pull back on that. And yeah, and yeah, so they write, "We are gods." in in fire on the street and they are Norse paganists which is just music to my ears I get it you know after 9-11 Hollywood loves making the villains you know radical religious fanatics and I think you know by the time of this episode they were like we can't we can't make it Muslims this is getting you know there there are so many, the vast majority of Muslims are good people who want nothing to do with this terrorism. We gotta make it someone else. So paganists, yeah. Um, for those who don't know, I'm Danish. I am not a paganist. I would not, uh, you know, given the chance, I would not acquire super strength and try to take the world back from the gods. But the the... I am I am in no way offended by this uh, by by that aspect of this episode. I I really love the idea of the just yeah that was that was a lot of fun and uh, yeah you know Thor is off world uh, we don't have his number look a lot of people make this mistake you have to send a raven and I am always down for seeing Peter McNichol in anything. I, I don't, I wasn't really aware he was still acting, but yeah. For those who might not know, he played Dr. Janos Poha in Ghostbusters 2. He is in Adam's Family Values as Gary Granger. He's Renfield in Dracula, Dracula Dead and Loving It, and David Langley in Bean. And yeah, just, you know, always loved, oh, he was, right, he was on, he was apparently on 24. I haven't watched that show. And... Right, he did some voice work for some of the Batman Arkham games. He did a voice for Rebels. Yeah, you know, I this is the... I haven't seen him in anything live action. Uh, this side of, like, the, the 
mid 90s so yeah that was that was very very cool and he's still really great you know just the the he's got the face and voice of this like expert on stuff and here he's not only an expert he was the guy that he's an expert on there is a wonderful explanation for this which i mean in his defense technically that's not a lie he has been lying to them but not about that and yeah so ward touches the staff no homo i'm just kidding homophobia is ridiculous and um yeah he gets very very angry and also like verbally mean towards the other team members uh, you know just really like picking at you know saying yeah tell, telling sky oh you just love the sound of your own voice telling fits you know I, you're not going to save simmons that was me you know and yeah we keep seeing these flashbacks to this well where you know he feels that he didn't do enough to save yeah he really did have an incre incredibly messed up childhood and i got to say when they had him punching the punching bag I I swear they were like two seconds away from doing the the gag they did in the Avengers where Steve knocks the the punching bag off the the chain and it goes flying and then he's got he got a bunch more and let's see yeah and ward tries to quit and colson is like the fact that you are telling me you don't think you're qualified makes me think you are not qualified you're, that you're still okay and yeah he goes to to talk to to professor randolph tell me what you know what what did this well, a Dutch angle is definitely involved. And, yeah, he was the Asgardian who stayed. And it's because he told this French girl in was 1544 that, yeah, and they they thought he would, yeah, and they, they turned it Christian, of course, because that's what Christianity has done throughout history. As, as long as Christian Christianity has had any sort of power they've been absorbing other people's beliefs so yeah I quite appreciate that detail and the rage will wear off after a few decades Wow. and yeah really really loved ward fighting Jakob and the the various pagans not yet and melinda may you know fighting all yeah also really badass and she completes the staff and yeah and and melinda may says you know i see it every day you know that's how she was able to to not get you know destroyed by the the rage and Phil says you know Portland has an excellent Philharmonic which is of course a reference to that's where his girlfriend is you know they that was the thing in the Avengers movie the, the yeah she was a she was part of the Philharmonic Orchestra in Portland and yeah, and, and Sky says, you know, I would rage all the time if I thought it would help. So I, I really do appreciate this episode. You know, the, the like was also somewhat done 
with with Hulk in the first Avengers movie, you know, this episode is about how do you deal with your anger? Do you feel it all the time like Melinda and Bruce? Do you repress it like Ward? You know, and and I yeah, Sky is basically living with hers, but just not letting it take over, kind of. So so yeah, and yeah, we we end on Ward and Melinda getting into the same hotel room, and the fact that in frame, you know, Melinda makes sure, you know, she leaves the door open so Ward can join. And she's got this this bottle, they share a look, the the bed is in frame, the bed frame is in frame. Yeah, I'm, there's a pretty decent chance that it's going to turn sexual, which don't know if that's the best, you know, that might not be the most professional way to handle it, but we can understand why. And the the very, very end is a flashback to Tahiti with, uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's obviously an implanted memory. That's where, you know, that's at least one of the repetitions of Tahiti is a magical place. You know, and this thing of, you know, oh, yeah, you, you dozed off. Of course you did. It's, uh, you know, this is so relaxing kind of thing. You know, the, the um, like, this is, this is either that he, like, came to temporarily from, like, whatever they were doing to him, and this is, like, you know... This was something that, that was supposed to soothe him. Oh, it's almost definitely a um, memory placed there later. But, yeah. Um, I think that is everything that I have to say for this episode. Um, I appreciate that Sky and Melinda May both tell Phil you know, no, Thor is, he's not just, like, handsome, he's dreamy, which I guess is how that ended up being a, a repeating joke on What If, a r running gag, where, you know, there, Phil also says, you know, he, I forget the exact words, but something like, oh, he's, he's amazing looking. Um... And yeah, the the right. It was it was it was a little amusing that throughout the episode, Gemma keeps saying, you know, oh, there's a scientific explanation for this. There's no magic, you know. And and at one point, she's like, that's not very scientific sounding. And just yeah, that was you know. I can appreciate that kind of joke. I've I've almost definitely done that and in my defense in real life magic is not real. Um I feel like there's one more thing. Um the the so, so the sexualization, you know, the the fact that Melinda and Skye are both attracted to Thor, you know, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm sure a huge, you know, a lot of women are. We we really know almost nothing about the French girl, but there is just the the detail about you know she loved stories. That is at least a you know not negative stereotype about women you know the yeah um and i mean technically he wasn't lying to her the thing he told her was completely true so that helps make it less creepy that he talked a woman into bed 
Oh, Jonathan Frakes directed this episode. Cool. Um, yeah, I think that is all that I have. Right, right. Uh, the, the thing with the well, I really admire their restraint. Some of it might have been down to, like, you know, network, show, there's a, there's certain expectations, you know, although the, the, that other episode with Scorch really pushed that quite far, but I really appreciate that they didn't make us watch more of because it was it was plenty upsetting as it was with the these you know was it maybe halfway through the episode they started showing these quick clips where you know a child almost drowned you know it's not you know he wasn't like oh you know he's just in ankle deep water he's uncomfortable but he's gonna no he would like Several times you see the head go underwater, you know, so, so, either there, you know, he had to struggle to stay up, or he was forced to stay down there so long that his, you know, his legs couldn't carry him throughout the entire, you know, ordeal, and he struggled to, to stay, I don't you know. Deeply upsetting. No wonder Ward is so intense. Yeah, I I really appreciate that they didn't force us to see more of that than than absolutely necessary. Um, it, I I quite appreciated when they intercut that with Ward, you know, hitting paganists with sticks. Um. You know, there's a, it's a, it's a, it's perhaps cliche, but it's also true. Hurt people hurt people. So, yeah, I, I thought that was, and, and that almost definitely, like, the vast majority of, of people who attack other people in real life, there is that kind of, there is some emotional trauma behind it. Um, I think that might be what I have to say. Oh, right, right. I like the thing with, you know, oh, it's so quiet in this church. Yeah, they, they've taken a vow of, of uh, silence, you know. And and then in walks Jakob. But when they, you know, when, when you get them talking, they squeal. That was a, a very, because cause I was also sitting there thinking, wait a minute, that is a very quiet, like, are we sure people who, are we sure that the people who live here are alive here and now? Because this is an extremely quiet, uh, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, that is everything. So, hopefully, <coughs> <clears throat> I'm, I'm hoping to do an episode tomorrow. If not, it will be Friday. And until then, make my marvel, because I never get tired of hearing my own voice. I just talk, talk, talk.